Father, we thank you, we praise you. Truly, Lord, you said through the prophet Joel that the weak say, I am strong. Thank you for teaching us your ways. This morning as we are gathered here, Spirit of God, minister to each one of us. For we are weak, ignorant, and we keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Lord, Help us to repent and change our thinking and follow your ways, not the ways based on our feelings, but on the truth. It's your truth that sets us free, Lord, and help us to apply these truths in our day-to-day -day life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, very good morning to all of you. Yeah, please be seated. Hallelujah. So last night we, we were studying on that faith is a spiritual force 
this faith is generated in my born again spirit human spirit and this faith is released out of my mouth and it is not enough that I only open my mouth and I speak but it has to be backed up with corresponding action hallelujah hallelujah so the fundamental element of faith is that I must believe in my heart I must believe in my heart and say it with my mouth now what is the difference between believing in my heart and believing in my mind is there a difference between believing in my heart and believing in my mind so what's the difference sorry Mind wants evidence, good, good, good. No, no, no. When a person believes in his mind, he wants to reason it out using his five senses. Like St. Thomas wanted to believe in Jesus' resurrection with his mind and he said, unless I see him, Unless I put my hand at his side and touch him, I am not going to believe. So that is called as believing in the mind that I want evidence that my senses can produce. And when I get those evidence, I will believe. And the Bible doesn't say that faith operates through believing in the mind, but believing in the heart. Believing in the heart is, let's say a person has got cancer and every evidence shows that he's going to die. Every evidence shows that there's no chance. The mind says, no chance. The doctor says, no chance. His senses says, no chance. His body says, no chance. People around say, no chance. But the word of God still says that by the stripes and wounds of Jesus, he is healed. Now let me give you an example of believing in the mind and believing in the heart. Last, yesterday, there was this woman named Joy. She's a prayerful woman. All her life she has been praying, but she was believing in the mind that she can pray but never heal a sick that's why she never went and laid hands on anybody but last yesterday when I called her and she made the prayer for the lump to disappear now did she ever think that she had this power inside of her no because this power of God the Holy Spirit power or the resurrection power of God cannot be felt with your senses. It has to be believed. And how do you believe? You believe with the evidence that comes through the word of God. Now we also saw that there was a, a Hindu girl here just 15 days or 18 days old What's her name? She man. Okay, she man. So just 18 days old. And she received the word. She put her fingers in his ears. And the ears popped open. Now when she believed. And she opened her mouth. And she made the prayer. Did she believe with her head? Or with her heart? Because the mind will say. How can a finger go in? and open deaf ears but the heart will say it will open because Jesus did the same way and he said the very thing that I did you also can do when you believe in me greater things than what I did praise God hallelujah so is our life governed by believing in the heart or believing in the mind so when a person is believing in the heart he's saying 
Every physical evidence is against me. But I have promise of God, not one, but more than one, two or three witnesses in the Bible. I've got testimonies in the Bible, and I choose to agree with the testimonies in the Bible, with the promises of God in the Bible. And now when a person is believing in his heart and releasing it out of his mouth, faith begins to work. Today, Father, during the Mass, said a very powerful statement called patience. Okay, and the Lord asked me a question. He asked me, do you want to be slim? And I said, I would love to. Then he said, has people come and given you different tips? Yes, Lord. Did you do it? Yes, Lord. Did you continue it? No, Lord. If I had to continue it, would I lose my weight? Surely. So when you look at me, it is a proof and an evidence that this person has been impatient in this area of his life because he knows the solution but is not willing to put it into practice. Because when he started, he started with a lot of zeal and a lot of passion. But as days went by, he lost his patience when he put himself on the scale and it looked like nothing changed. He gave up. Every battle that we have ever lost in our life is when we got impatient. And every battle we win when we are in patience, when our faith is being tested, we do not quit, but you continue in that what we believe with our heart, it gives birth to patience. Patience starts getting developed in us, not when everything is going fine, but when everything is going wrong. And that's why we need to continue. If you have ever lost a match in your life, one of the biggest reasons is being impatient. All those who went to school, did you patiently go all those 10 years to school? Oh yeah. Did you study? Oh yeah. Did you write your exams? Oh yeah. Did you pass your exams? Yeah. Did you get the certificate that you have passed the 10th standard? Yeah. yeah. If you failed, you have to re-answer them. And let's say a person kept failing and kept failing and kept failing. He cannot go ahead because he needs to pass the test. In the same way, God is saying to you this morning that you need to pass the test. And what's the test that you need to pass? You got to get out of your head knowledge and get into a heart knowledge. So when you make a choice between your reasoning and God's word, choose God's word, believe his word, and have a corresponding action on that word. Now, faith is moving on my behalf. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, is it possible for me to say, by the stripes and wounds of Jesus, I'm healed? Yeah. But after some time, the symptom starts. Now, can I say exactly opposite? Oh, God, please heal me. Do we do that? One of the key factors that faith gets short-circuited in our life is we doubt what we say. We doubt what we say. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So every day we open our mouth, how do I know what you believe? The Bible says, what you believe is what you speak. 
So there is a fundamental of faith which says, I must believe in my heart, I must speak, I must pray, and I must forgive. Unforgiveness will destroy and short circuit my faith. So in a day, how many people come into your life to get you into short circuit? Hello? Many. And what's your job now? During the Mass, the, the priest said, the Lord be with you and also with you. Then what does he say? Lift up your Then give him give him thanks and praise. And what do we say? It is right and just to give him what? Thanks and praise. We say that. We say that. Now when, when somebody does something unjust, are you saying, it is still right for me to give him thanks and praise? Mm -hmm. See, during the Mass we, we say it and we say it by faith that when the situation comes, can we still give him thanks and praise? Because God works in mysterious ways. He can turn your crooked lines and still get you on the right path. But what does he want from my side? He wants from my side thanksgiving and praise. Why does he want thanksgiving and praise? So that his collar will go up? No. He is asking you to give thanks and praise because you are thanking and praising and saying, God, with my eyes I can say, I can see the game is over. With my ears I can hear the game is over. With my senses I can see the game is over. But I'm thanking and praising you because you are the most high God. You are the king over every flood and every storm of my life. And I'm looking at you because you still have a way to get these things aligned for me. The other day my wife showed me a marriage uh, photograph. And she was so slim, so young, so beautiful. And uh, I was also like her, praise God, slim. My waist was 28 when I got married. You can imagine. And on that photograph, I was looking at it, and I could not see my two daughters. I could not see new creation home. I could not see those things that I see right now. But it was all there. Hey, it was all there. My children were inside of me. In the same way, there are so many things that are inside of us. And those things which are inside of us, which we don't even know, will begin to manifest when we start practicing a lifestyle of praise and thanksgiving, especially in the midst of a storm. Because your praise and thanksgiving confuses the enemy because the enemy is saying with all that pressure that I put in it's going to be a short circuit and this person is going to open his mouth and speak what I want him to speak but instead of you speaking what the devil wants you to speak you have opening your mouth and giving God the praise the highest praise, the strongest praise, the loudest praise, the full praise empowered praise and when you do that the walls that the devil has built against you they come crashing down like the Jericho wall Amen. my friend if you don't know what to do in the midst of your battle at least know this that when you don't know what to do open your mouth and give him praise open your mouth and give him thanks because praise and thanksgiving will keep you on faith and at the same time, give you the strength to be extremely patient because your mind is now full of God. When you don't give him the praise and thanksgiving, your mind is full 
of your problem. Decisions are made based on what is your mind full of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So write down, when the elements of that law, when the elements of that law are in place, are in place, faith will work. Faith will work. Now, my question to everybody, see it here, you just wrote, when the elements of that law, when the elements of that law, what law? Faith law, okay, are in place, faith will work. Now, what is that element? Now, what is that element for that law of faith to work? What are those elements? Fundamentals of faith is believe in my heart, speak it out of my mouth. Say that again. Say that again, please. So under pressure, what do you believe in your heart? Under pressure, do you believe what's in your heart or believe what's in your mind? Let's say my child is under some crisis. Can the mama be disturbed? Hey mama, can you be disturbed? Yeah. So now when you are disturbed, where is the disturbance? In your mind or in your heart? In your mind. Now what comes out of your mouth? What's in your heart or what's in your mind? So when it comes out of your mouth, what's in your mind? Did you activate the law of faith or did you activate the law of fear? So now, are you helping your baby or you are causing more destruction in your baby's life? So are you wake, wo working on her behalf or in her favor or you are going against her? Physically, in the natural, the baby feels good because mama is talking what she is talking. But in the spiritual realm, the mama is putting more fuel into the baby's life to get destroyed much faster than before. So what's the fundamental law of faith? Come on, open your mouth and say that. Believe in my heart. Again. 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 Now let me confess this to you, that I know some people who have come for the retreat only once or twice and they have never ever come back again, okay? But the day they came, they took the CD and they took the book. They heard on the CD the principles of faith and they used the book to find the promises of faith. And now they said, preacher, we don't need to come to you anymore because now we have the fundamentals of faith. We know how this law works. And they began to use the book day and night that they memorized the scriptures and planted in their heart. And now under, when they came under pressure, all that they did was to practice what was taught to them. I know a couple who had no children for 11 years. And they began to take the scriptures, the, the husband and the wife, every day, and they got three after that. Not one. They had financial crisis, their financial crisis was over. They had so many issues, everything was over. And one day, I met them and I said, you don't come for the retreat. They said, we don't need to. Because we began to learn the scriptures, what was there in the book, and now we go on the YouTube, download it, we listen to it, and we uh, hear it in private, we discuss it with my spouse, and now we put it into practice, and we have been getting amazing results. 
Because the law does not work because you came here. The law works when you practice what was taught to you. That's why many a times people will say, I attended four of your retreats, so what? How much did you practice? So what's the fundamental law of faith? Believing in your mind. Believing in your mind. Believing in your mind. So is Abraham called the father of faith? Why is he called the father of faith? Because he is the one who believed in his heart and spoke it out of his mouth. What did he believe in his heart? He is a father of many nations because God called him that. And what did he speak? He called himself Abraham. He introduced everybody that his name is Abraham. He introduced his wife to everybody. She is no longer Sarai. She is Sarah, mother of many nations. Did they exercise their faith? Did it come to pass? Do you exercise your faith? Okay, write down in bold capital letters, please. We don't want to miss this. God is not trying, write down, God is not trying to restrict you. God is not trying to restrict you but using the laws but using the laws incorrectly but using the laws incorrectly will keep them will keep them from working will keep them from working and will keep them from working and you won't get the result and you won't get the result you want and you won't get the result you want hallelujah uh, let me read that again for you. God is not trying to restrict you, but using the laws incorrectly will keep them from working and you won't get the result you want. Praise God. Now, is it that God wants you in trouble? He doesn't want, he is restricting you from being successful or prosperous or healthy. No. Now, if I take this mobile and I throw it and I leave it and I keep practicing that, what would you call that? Let's say I put it the first time, the screen did not break. I did it the second time, the screen did not break. But when I'm doing the third time, what would you call me? What would you call me? Stupid, fool, mad. Now imagine, now imagine a person who knows the spiritual law and he, he finds a person who is sick and the person is all the time saying, please keep me in prayer, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. What does that mean? Because that person is ignorant but when he understands this is how the law works and he's going on doing the same thing over and over again, uh, what would you call that person? Stupid. Foolish. You are destroying your own life. And then you blame God and he say, God never answered my prayer. God never answered your prayer. Who told you? You planted potatoes and you are praying to God for tomatoes. So are we supposed to be extremely vigilant that we activate the law? And how do you activate the law? Believe in your heart and confess it with your mouth. So is God going to obstruct you? No. 
but have you been activating the law correctly? For the electrical wires, they need to be connected correctly. If they are not connected correctly, will they work? There is power in that wire, but is it going into that appliance? No. Loose connection, short circuit, it will blow up the appliance. In the same way, each one of us seated here, we have the power of God the day we got baptized in Jesus. We believed in Jesus. We got born again. The power is in us. But have we been extremely vigilant and actively connecting the connections? What happens to the person who never opens his mouth and speaks the promises of God? Can faith get into action? What about the person right from morning is opening the promises of God and connecting here, connecting there, connecting there, connecting other? Now, is he giving faith a lot of work? Is it going to produce a lot of result? Yes. So has God been partial or that person has been working hard to get more and more faith connected? So have we been extremely lazy when it comes to activating the law of faith? Have we been lazy in activating the law of fear? No. We activate it all the time. Praise God. Is that clear? So is God restricting you or your own words are restricting you? Is God restricting you or your own kind of ignorant understanding? Foolish understanding is destroying, is destroying us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So write down in bold capital letters, please. If I'm not getting results, if I'm not getting results, if I'm not getting results, I need to examine what? My mind. I need to examine. Come on. I need to examine. Come on, I need to examine. Okay, let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say, this brother of mine is believing in his heart, confessing with his mouth, and still he gets no result. He is, he is uh, believing in his heart. He is speaking with his mouth. Then where's the problem? He is taking the corresponding action as well. And it's still not working. He is, listen, listen. He is believing in his heart, confessing with his mouth, and his corresponding action. Do you know... What is the fuse box when it comes to spiritual life? Love. Love. He must examine his love life. Right on. He must examine his, his love life. I need to examine my love life. Faith does not work Faith does not work in an unforgiving heart. Faith does not work in an unforgiving heart. So let's take for example, a person is fasting for 40 days, using scriptures, confessing the word, doing everything possible, but that person is a very irritated person. Gets frustrated quickly, gets angry quickly, 
and because of somebody doing something, for years he keeps all the records. Now, will that law of faith work in his life? No. So if the devil knows that you are about to get a very powerful breakthrough in your life, extremely powerful breakthrough in your life, you have been waiting for years and you have been pregnant and now it's time for delivery. How many of you believe that a woman, before she delivers, there's something called as labor pain? Yeah, I, yeah, I know all the women will believe, but the men might not believe because they have gone through it. Correct. Now, is labor pain comfortable? Extremely painful and uncomfortable, right? But the labor pain is an indication that you are close to your miracle. It is an indication that your baby is about to come out. You have been waiting for nine months and now after that nine months that labor pain is saying it's time to give birth to your baby in the same way when a person is confessing, believing in his heart, confessing with his mouth and there comes pressure from everywhere trying to get you out of the love life. It is a proof that it's time to give birth to your miracle. So for unnecessary, un, uh, unjust, somebody comes and insults you, abuses you, accuses you, puts all kind of blame against you, and, 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 and you are wondering, I did not do anything, and now you are trying to justify, hey listen, keep your mouth shut, like Jesus did on the cross, and forgive and bless and pray you will give birth to your miracle how many times do you get irritated when somebody mistreats you unjustly now listen mama you got your bed ready you have put your bed sheet and everything there beautifully and the other person comes and removes your bed sheet and throws it somewhere and right in front of your eyes Don't mess with this mama, I'll tell you why. Her husband, when he was young, in college, he was a boxer. And for the boxing competition, when he went, without coaching, let me tell you, without coaching, every opponent was knocked out. He, none of the, the, the competition was on points, straight knockout. And that's her husband, don't mess with her. Just because he has retired doesn't mean he doesn't know. Hallelujah. And I came to know when I met his brother. His dad was a boxer. And his dad did not want anybody to get into boxing. So nobody knew. And he went and put his name in boxing. No coaching, nothing. Put down the gloves and went in. It's in the blood, man. Yeah. Without coaching, nothing, he went into the ring and every opponent knocked out. <laughs> then he met her. After he met her, this boxer gave him a kiss. He put his gloves aside and he said, never again will I get into that ring again. Yeah, you all want to hear other people's story. She said, I never knew all this. Now you know, don't mess with her. Will it irritate you when somebody purposely, deliberately do wrong to you unjustly? Come on. Yeah, yeah. And when you got irritated, where's the fuse now? Blown off. What happens to a house whose fuse is blown off? Can anything in the house work now? No. And that's how the law of faith is. And that's why the Lord teaches us with his own lifestyle that when he was on the cross, he would not open his mouth. It was a total unjust. We read yesterday. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. 
and yet he went through all that disgrace. He would not open his mouth. The only time he opened his mouth was to bless. Bless whom? Those who came against him. All of us. So how does the law of faith work? The law of faith works based on the proportion of your love walk. The more and more you are compassionate, the more and more you are loving, the more and more you are forgiving, especially under pressure, the faith will work at the highest peak. And praise God, every day we have, uh, we have uh, tests going on when it comes to pressure. How come you came alone? With joy. Oh, with the builder, the construction. So, so she's looking after the construction. <laughs> Praise God. Have you got joy, brother? You got joy, but she, you just said she's gone there. No, no, he stopped us on the way. Okay. And, uh, So love has come, joy has not come. <laughs> there she's come now. There you you are worried, where is my joy? Where is my joy? She's come. I, I want to make a testimony because it's important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just give the mic. Wow. <laughs> what happened, Joy? You, your name is Joy. The why are, why did you get the <laughs> Oh, oh if that means you know his capacity, huh? She's saying, she, she, yeah, 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 just, just, the mic is on. Hello. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Uh, the fuse is gone off, she'll put it on. Yeah. No, 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 it's come, it's come, it's come, it's come. Because uh, we got a switch there. We got a switch there on the mixer. We, it was mute, now it is on. Yeah, tell us about Hello. joy. He's so, telling about you. I have come to this retreat because I have a problem. And my problem is that of unforgiveness. I cannot forgive. And this is going on from 95. So now, my wife has brought me here actually. I'm sitting there thinking how I will ask about getting my unforgiveness. And he comes and asks me a question about unforgiveness. That's why I looked at my partner because I was in shock. You ask about that boy who the principal tells you and what will you do? Yes. So I say how he is asking me a question. I want to ask him. You got it? Joy. Shh. Yeah. Speak brother. So he answered it by saying that if you are forgiven, then you should not talk anything negative about the person. I said thank you to him. So for me, this is a testimony. Well, I came for that basically. I've come for that. And I'm talking about forgiveness only now, before you walked in. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, you sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'll give you some more. I'll give you some more. So now that Joy irritated you as much as she wants, which she did not do all her life, and she's going to train you how to forgive. Go ahead, Joy. You did not know that. You, 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 you. Just give the mic, just give the mic. Let's, let's have it uh, out of her mouth. Listen, listen, Joy, listen, Joy. There are certain times God uses people and their testimonies. No, what you said just now. No, 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 not the testimony. What you said, you never knew what, what did you say? At least where I'm concerned, this is the first time I'm hearing about him being unable to forgive. I've always felt forgiven. <laughs> because, because he loves you, you know, when it comes to you. I don't know. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> Praise God. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Relax, 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 relax. We were studying on the principles of faith. The fundamentals of faith. And Jesus gave us the fundamental of faith is in Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, and 25. He said, the first thing is speaking 
believing in the heart, praying and forgiving. Okay? Now, if uh, we, we just wrote that God is not restricting from us uh, anything. He wants to give us everything and he has given us everything. Then how come those things that he has given is not manifesting? It's not manifesting because we have not been applying the law, the law of faith into action. If we apply it incorrectly, then there will be no result. So now when God said, uh, Jesus said, believe in your heart, he never said believe in your mind. What is believing in the mind? Believing in the mind is when I want physical evidence to believe. Believing in the heart is when I have spiritual evidence to believe. For example, joy, you had a desire that your husband's ears should be open. Okay? And when I called that girl, and she's a Hindu girl, only 18 days old in the Lord, at once the mind will say, he picked up the wrong person. I thought he would pray. Is that right? Because physical evidence says, she's just 18 days old, what can she do? But her faith is saying, if that's what Jesus said, I choose to believe that. So in her heart, she is believing whatever Jesus said. Right? Now you got fingers, right? And you are a believer by birth. But you never put your finger in his ears. Did you? You told him to do it. But you did not do it. Okay, okay, okay. Now, when she put the fingers in, her, in, his, in his ears, with the mind, if, if you go to an ENT doctor and say, hey, you know, my spouse had a problem in the ears, you know, 40 years, and a young girl put her fingers in his ears, and the ears open, what will the doctor say? He'll faint. <laughs> He'll say, never in my medical science have I got that fingers can open deaf ears. Now that's what the mind will say. But what will the heart say? The heart will say, hey, when Jesus saw a deaf man, he put his fingers in and said, yes, be open. And what did this girl do? She did exactly what Jesus did. The result came. So when, when he says believe in the heart, is when you take evidence from the Bible and make that evidence the highest priority in your life. So that's the time the Lord said, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Now this law works all the time, but there is something that hinders this law, and that is the love life. If I've got unforgiveness or bitterness, then this law won't work. My dear brother, your name is Oscar. Oscar, how many children you got? Three. Three. Praise God. You, that means your wife was pregnant three times. Yes. yes. That means your wife went... No, I, I will ask you as a lawyer. Okay. That means uh, she went to the hospital all the three times or was it at home? All the Where? Hospital. hospital. Good. Now, was it for nine months or nine years? Pregnancy. Nine months. Nine months. Good. Uh, now, in those nine months... Did she have a big stomach? Okay. Before the baby could come, before the baby could come, was the date given by the doctor? Yes. yes. Now, did it happen on that due date? Yes. More or less, but not on that date. Then how come you took her to the hospital? Because she told me the bag is bursting. Okay, bag is bursting and she got some labor pain. Were you there when the labor pain took place? Yeah. Yes. In the night, one thirty. <laughs> <laughs> and the hospital is the opposite. Ah, okay, 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 okay. On okay. the okay. road, she says, I can't. I stopped on the road. She got down and she did this and put her back in the hospital. We went uh, during the delivery. I was sleeping out on the bench. <laughs> because you don't uh, listen, listen. Okay, okay. I I picked up the wrong person. Now. I wanted to ask you because because see, listen.
Listen, okay, okay, let's forget him. He is giving too many answers. And uh, now, now, no, 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 only, only one answer. What made you go to the hospital? Was it the labor pain? I can't give you the medical history, but yes. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, now, did the labor pain tell you it's time to give birth to a baby? In the same way, my friend, when you believe in your heart and you confess you just got pregnant in your spiritual womb, before the miracle can manifest, somebody will come and irritate you. That's your labor pain. And in the labor pain, don't take her on the bike. Take her on the horse. <laughs> what happens when you take her on the horse? Horse, right. The baby will be hurt with the jerks. In the same way, you see to it that you go on a smooth ride to the hospital taking care that there should be no damage to the baby. In the same way, when somebody is coming against you, you should be extremely vigilant that I will not get offended because the moment I got offended, my baby is dead. You check out, you check out people who get offended quickly in their life. There's nothing happening. Only chaos and chaos and chaos. Unforgiveness is a demonic spirit. It will come and steal, kill and destroy all that God has given you. And, and, and the person won't even know. And the devil will see to it that he is irritated more and out of his mouth will come curses after curses and he is now destroying his own life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Did I put so much of pressure on Joy that she's going home? I won't ask her any more questions if that is... Oh, it's a notebook and a pen, okay. See, this is called as misinterpretation. She gets up and she walks. It looks like she got irritated and she's going out. So it can be a misinterpretation. I'm trying, saying it purposely. I know she, she won't go out because anyway, she's full of joy. Her name is Joy. Praise God. She cannot go out of joy. Praise God. Praise God. But can it be misinterpreted? In the same way, in relationships, what does the devil use? Misinterpretation, misunderstanding, and then it causes my mouth to open and I give a message what I think from my side and now begins the symbols banging in the house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So write down. We must check ourselves. We must check ourselves. Am I standing on the word of God? I must check myself. Am I standing on the word of God or on an idea? Or on an idea? Idea. Idea. How many of us have different ideas and plans? And how many of us look to the Bible to find his word and his promise? Which one are you standing? Let me give an example. Let me give an example. There are three kings coming against King Joseph. Okay? And these are great and mighty kings with a mighty army and King Joseph is no match to him at all. Now what is the strategy that God teaches King Joseph? God says to Joseph, listen Joseph, the battle is not yours. I will fight the battle for you. Now what is King Joseph doing? Panicking or praising God? Is he dancing? Yes. Is he worshipping God? Yes. Has he declared a fast? Yes. Is he praying? Yes. Has he called the whole country to do the same? Yes. yes. Now when he is going on to the war, who is he sending in front of the army? The musicians. 
what are they doing praising god now what happens when they are praising god believing in what god said is the enemy put into confusion yes are the three kings killing each other yes, yes. are they all killed yes. yes is the army killed yes, yes. does king joseph had get a victory yes. now if this is there in the bible and i found the scripture will i make my own plans or will i go with the scripture are you are you understanding yes. the scriptures and the testimonies are written over there for us to take it as a reference book and take it you know in the court of law in the court of law when there is a war a fight going on the lawyer will say uh, my lord session so and so in this year on this case this is the what had happened and according to that this was the judgment that was given and i've got that reference in my book yes. come on and based on that reference the judge will begin to look at it and he say oh yeah and he will change the judgment in the same way you and i have been given the book of reference for us that we can fight our cases looking at the reference book put our finger there and say this is the chapter this is the verse this is what what happened god you are the same you don't change you are the same yesterday you are the same today and you are the same forever i am standing on your word I'm not interested in any idea of the world I would rather stand on your word because your word never fails What are you standing on Ideas from the world The world will say tit for tat And the word will say when somebody strikes you turn the other cheek you mean to say God wants his children to be beaten up You know what that means? <coughs> that means I'm telling my opponent I'm not standing on my strength, I'm standing on God's strength. And because I follow him, he is now going to take over the battle. For example, I have an issue with her for the last 5 years. She has invited for a feast in a house and i know she is going to invite her for this program so i've made up my mind that i'm going to see her after 5 years so i'm preparing myself because when i'm going to see her it's going to be a war so i make up my mind and i say god according to your word i will go and shake hand with her and say please forgive me for whatever has happened so i go there and i wish her please forgive me and when instead of giving a hand she slaps me on my cheek everybody saw it will i stand or will i move or will i give her has it changed my emotions has it changed my my feelings has it changed my decision one slap come on i'm asking you yes but when a person still keeps holding on to the word and says i still love you now what happens now god takes over the battle and that's what you find with jesus when he was striked he had every power to finish them off but he was standing on his father's word and he would not change pressures of life people strike you it's not the people but the spirit inside that person striking you to change your decision and if a person is standing on the word and doesn't change his decision he cannot be defeated because now the creator takes over the battle but the moment you turn around and you strike now you have not given god to get into this battle because you have become god by your own decision because your decision is no longer on the word your decision is based on your own idea so how many times do we stand on our own idea the real battle of life is 
How much can I stand on God's word? And the longer you stand on God's word, you have built your house on a solid rock. Storm can come, wind can come and beat on the house, but the house will not shake, the house will not fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Write down. Next paragraph, write down. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. And don't doubt. Speak to the mountain and don't doubt what you say. Speak to the mountain and don't doubt what you say. First one, believe what you say, believe what you say will happen and you will have what you say. Believe what you say will happen and you will have and you will have what you say. Today, Father Joseph was asking us that when you plant the seed, after planting the seed, what do you do? You water it and what else? You manure it and what else? You protect it from pest. Can you make that seed grow? No. Can you make that seed grow into a tree that matures? No. Can you make that seed bring fruit? No. no. What's your job? Water it, protect it, and give some nutrition or nourishment for that manure it. Okay. Okay. So did Jesus say his word is a seed? Yes, he said that. So does that seed have power to produce what it says? So can that seed have the power to kill cancer? Yes, yes. Does it have power to restore your health? Yes. Does it have power to restore your marriage? Yes. Does it have power to restore relationship? Yes. Does it have power to bring forth your finances? Yes. It has power for everything. And that's why the first thing I must do is to choose the seed. The Bible is a bag full of seeds of every kind that can touch every area of your life. I am the farmer who is supposed to choose what seed I need to plant in my farm and that farm is my heart which is a soil. Now this soil which is a heart is a special kind of soil that when you put any kind of seed in the soil, the soil will make it sprout. So if I take the words of people insulting me and abusing me and putting it in my heart, it will sprout. It will grow. But now my, my soil is filled with wrong kind of seeds which is going to bring forth a wrong kind of harvest. Now just because uh, somebody said something to me once, I take that inside and I rehearse, uh, rehearse, rehearse the same thing over and over and over and over again. What am I doing? Watering the seed. In the same way, I pick up a scripture from the Bible, a promise of God, three or four connected to my area, and I keep on rehearsing it over and over and over again, and I keep thanking God, that God, I thank you so much, you have promised me, and I believe it will come to pass, and because I believe it will come to pass, I give you all the thanks and praise. Now what are you doing? Watering the 
And as you are watering the seed, there comes somebody with some bad news. Like Jairus had planted a good seed in his heart and he went and spoke to Jesus and said, Jesus, my daughter is at the point of death. Please come to my house, lay your hand on her and she will get well. And Jesus took that seed and began to walk with Jairus. The seed began to grow. Jesus coming close to his miracle. And there comes a woman with the issue of blood and Jesus says, who touched me? And she speaks a story of 12 years and now a news comes from Jairus' house. Your daughter is dead. Why do you want to trouble the master anymore? It's over. The game is over. So now, please finish it. What did Jesus say? Jesus said to Jairus, Jairus, do not fear. Just keep believing what you started on the beach. Did Jairus open his mouth? You know, you know, my friend, you know, my friend, remember this, when you have planted the good seed in your heart, confessed with your mouth, and then comes pressures of life, giving you all kinds of bad news. Everything in your emotions is triggering in, and you want to open your mouth and you speak. The moment you spoke it, you aborted your baby. If Jairus had to open his mouth and speak anything what he felt, anything that he heard the news, his daughter would have been dead. It is very, very powerful to keep your mouth shut and not speak a word. Under pressure, the miracle will still come. It is more powerful to keep your mouth shut than speaking negative word out of your own mouth. If everything is triggering in you and you, uh, everything is negative in you, uh, in your thoughts, it means you have been attacked by the enemy. He is coming, he is knocking at the door and, and he is saying, come on, open the door. I want to steal, kill and destroy the miracle that is going to take place right now. And he is knocking at your door and saying, come on, open your mouth. And you're saying, mm-hmm. And now when you're about to open your mouth under pressure, you're thanking and praising God. You know what you just did? You confused the enemy. And now the birth takes place without labor pain. And that's what we go through every day in our life. And these are spiritual laws. And once a person understands the spiritual law and begins to practice and practice and practice and practice and practice, it said that deliberately practicing. I'm purposely practicing. I'm intentionally practicing. So now when the pressure comes, I keep my mouth shut. Come on, man, you chicken, open your mouth and talk to me. I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. That's my choice. But you are a fool. You are this, you are that, you are that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You idiot, you stupid fellow. Mm -hmm. You are keeping quiet. That means you have really done it. That's the proof you can't open your mouth. Mm -hmm. Now who is fighting the battle for you? Hello, who's fighting the battle for you? How many battles have we allowed God to fight? And how many battles do we fight? If you keep your mouth shut under pressure and every time you open your mouth, you're only saying, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I don't understand this and I don't know what to do. Lord, I'm powerless without you. But when I'm thanking you and praising you, not knowing what's happening, 
but I'll still do it, Lord, because your word says so. I thank you so much. You're fighting the battle for me. And when you fight the battle for me, I'm already celebrating my victory, Lord, because you are victorious all the time. You never fail. Amen. Lord, you never, ever fail. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just write down a few more points and then we can get into praise and worship. Praise God. Just a few points. What was the last line? Believe what you say will happen and you will have whatever you say. Therefore Jesus says, Therefore Jesus says, when you pray, therefore Jesus says, when you pray, believe. Therefore Jesus says, when you pray, believe, you have what you say. Believe, you have what you say, and you will have it. And you will have it. And when you pray, forgive. Forgive. Okay, my friend, is this Jesus' command for us when you pray, forgive? So what should be the first thing that I pray? Hey, why do you think Jesus put that forgive on the highest position? Because in everyday life, offenses will surely come. Opposition will surely come. Abuse will surely come. Insult will surely come. You cannot avoid them. Somebody will say, brother, when will it stop in my life? You stop breathing oxygen, it will stop. If you are breathing oxygen, all this will surely come. But when it comes, what's the first thing he says? Forgive. What's the word for give? Two words. For give. Now, if she has given me something extremely painful, she gave me, I took that, now it's my turn to give her. So when I'm forgiving, I'm not giving her what is due to her, but I'm giving her total freedom. I'm letting her go free. It's forgiveness. Instead of me giving her back with the same curse, I'm giving her my blessings. I'm giving her my prayer. I'm giving her something good instead of what she gave it to me. It's forgiveness. So, so when anybody is giving me anything, it's my choice to repay with the same or to repay with a blessing. And that's why the Lord says the first thing you do when you open your mouth and pray, see that you forgive because if you don't forgive, all your prayer is still not going to be answered because the fuse is blown off. In other words, you want the anointing of God to work in your life supernaturally. The first key is for give. Hallelujah. Last line and then we go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The second fundamental of faith is the second fundamental of faith is to act or perform to act or perform corresponding actions. Listen, listen, listen. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. What's his name? Winfred? Winfred, I'm talking to you. Open your eyes in the name of Jesus and write down what I'm saying. Quickly. The second fundamental of faith is to act or perform corresponding action 
corresponding action to what you are believing to what you are believing with your heart with your heart and saying with your mouth and saying with your mouth now now here is my brother winfred that every time he is going through some manifestation now his mind is controlled and he allows his body to be under that control now he has got two choices one believe in his heart what god said to believe his senses what your senses communicate to the body are you following now when he says lord i believe in my heart that i'm set free and the next time his mind says and has a control over his body he is saying listen i don't accept that message any more because i have been set free who set you free jesus set me free how do you know you are free because the bible says i am free the bible says he redeemed me from every curse of the law the bible says he shed his blood for me and every sin and every consequences of sin has been washed in the blood of jesus and therefore i am free and because i am free i will act with my freedom in the name of jesus and from now on those emotions will have no more power over me now is he taking a corresponding action to what he is believing will those emotions now have authority over him now for example when i call a person out do you think my, my, i don't have thoughts the devil will say listen you called this person out nothing's going to happen and when he says nothing's going to happen i start rejoicing because the devil is a liar and he just gave me a lie nothing's going to happen i take the opposite of the lie and it becomes the truth yes are you all ready brother bento yeah okay 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 start did you write what did you write what you are believing with your heart and saying with your mouth last line put corresponding action to your faith put corresponding action to your faith james chapter 2 17 james chapter 2 17 come sister maria you can begin with the rosary yeah 